So let's talk about family members and creating a team. Don't just think about the cousin or the aunt that seems to always be telling the good juicy stories at the holiday table. Make sure every family member knows you're starting this process for a few reasons. The quiet family members might know a lot of great stuff, might have a ton of great photos and documents squirreled away, and might be the best people at identifying those photos that have no labels. Don't ignore the distant cousins or the younger people in the family. It's easy to drop into stereotypes of only the older generations care about genealogy. So some of the younger generations might have done a DNA test and are really interested in that. They might have already created an online family tree, but they haven't talked about it yet. Um, they might have already done family history for a school project. They might also be the really perfect person to help identify um, models of antique cars, some older fashion trends, and, and then subtleties in uh, military uniforms. Um, they might also be really into the idea of coding or creating a better system for you to organize all your digital files. Um, and they could be really into the idea of interviewing other family members. Maybe they don't remember hearing those stories that we stayed out late for on the porch, um, or they just have never heard them before. And they might actually already have all the equipment you need to set up a really good interview. Maybe they, they are doing their own podcast or they're perfect at setting up a website and they might be really into some of the ways that you could share your story. In tight-knit communities and religious groups, super small towns and urban neighborhood pockets, family, friends are family. Don't forget this when you're researching people and certainly don't forget them when building a team to help support you. These can be the town know-it-alls, the people who take forever grocery shopping because they know everyone and how they're connected. My dad is one of those. It's the retired educator who taught in the community for over 40 years and knows everybody and probably taught everybody. Or the spiritual leader who has helped so many families and knows all the ins and outs. These people are treasures to your family history. They could be key to those mystery photographs too of distant townspeople in a photo or maybe it's somebody else's aunt or uncle that they were friends with your family. Reach out to a local genealogy or local historical society of a family member you're starting to study. Maybe you moved away from your family and lived in the same spot forever. Don't just talk to them about what research um, documents they have. Talk to them about how you're trying to find out more. They, while they do hold a ton of information, they can um, know how to connect you to distant relatives you didn't realize you had without all the DNA and social media in between. Who knows, they might even be the distant family. I've seen it happen. I've seen it where someone has reached out to this um, research library I looked in saying they were coming and they were working on a specific surname. And my volunteer was like, hey, that's my family. And she showed up with her boxes and flash drives. And so when the person came, that person just inherited everything. <laughs> so don't let that uh, thought leave you. Explore social media if you want to. Um, there's a PDF floating around out there that talks about the over 114,000 English speaking genealogy Facebook groups. So if you're on Facebook, give it a look, pose your questions and someone will be more than happy to help you in those specific groups. And then when you join historical societies and genealogy societies, we're here to collect and share stories, right? join a community, show up to events when it's safe to, find a group you can call in for help. Um, a lot of these organizations are providing tons of additional digital um, online education, like what you're in today. And there's a huge network of hobbyists and professionals out there. It's, I mean, genealogy is like one of the largest hobbies in America next to gardening, and we keep growing. Lastly, and most importantly, schedule and record as many interviews and conversations as possible and as early as you can. Life is not a guarantee. Please don't waste any more time and continue to regret those I wish I should have asked questions.